Podcasting Kids, my name is Abby and I'm from the Jacksonville campus. We are so excited to have you here with us today. We have a lot of fun things in store for you, but first, let's stand up and get ready to worship.
know about you guys, but it always makes me feel so good to worship our amazing God. All of this staying at home stuff has me really bored. I know it's to keep us safe, but I'm missing hanging out with my friends and playing games. What's a good game that I can play inside? I got it. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, but I can't play that by myself. Hey, Cody, come play rock, paper, scissors with me. Hey, Abby, did you say you wanted to play rock, paper, scissors with me? Yeah. Oh, hi, friends. I'm Cody. I'm from the Keokuk campus. Are you sure you want to play with me? I'm really good at this game. Yeah, I mean, it's just a friendly game, right? <laughs> right. Okay. Friends, grab your parents or whoever is watching this with you and play along with us at home. All right, you ready? Oh, I'm ready to win. But wait, let's make this interesting. What's our theme this month? Upside down? Right, so how about we play this game? Upside down. Whoa, what's, what's going, going on? on? Wow, Whoa. what? All right, much better. You ready? I'm ready to win, like I said. All right, let's do this, you ready? Rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. Oh. Ha, I told you I was good at this game. You are really good, good job. All right, ready? Rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh, man, twice. Twice. Okay. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Ha oh. <laughs> I got one. Yes. You All get right. lucky every now and then. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Man. Two in a row. <gasps> We're tied now. Ha <sighs> <sighs> Next one. All right. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh, <laughs> dang it. Scissors crushes rock every time. Just like I crushed you. Ha. <laughs> I win. Guess what? You lose. Loser. <laughs> oh, okay. Good job, Cody. Good job. You're really good at this game, but not so good at winning. You know this month we're learning about humility, and that means putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Well, I won, so I deserve to brag. You did win, and good job on that. But what, we're say what you were saying could really hurt somebody's feelings. Now I know that you were just trying to be a good friend and play with me, but when you won, you were saying some mean stuff. Let's check out this video and learn what humility is. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Philippians, chapter two, verses three through eight. Jesus's life and death and resurrection changed the way everything works. It changed how we view others and how we treat them. One of Jesus's followers, a man named Paul, wrote about it in a letter to believers in Philippi. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. As you deal with one another, you should think and act as Jesus did. Jesus was equal with God, but Jesus didn't take advantage of that fact. Instead, he made himself nothing. He did this by taking on the nature of a servant. He appeared as a man. He was humble and obeyed God completely. He did this even though it led to his death. Let's imagine how this truth might play out today. Angus McCrane had been up since 5.30 a.m. for his job as a school bus driver. After three morning routes, he skipped lunch to clean out throw up and a spilled soda from the back of his bus. Yuck. Then there were three afternoon routes and a whole stack of paperwork waiting for him at the bus garage at the end of the day. So by the time Angus got home, he was starving. He couldn't wait to dig into this delicious ribeye he'd picked up. Mm. <laughs> Gonna fire up that grill right away. While the grill heated, Angus prepared a baked potato and sauteed green beans. A little salt, a little lemon. Doo -doo -doo. Then he seared the steak to perfection and slid it on his plate alongside the fluffy baked potato and crisp green beans. Ooh. Ah, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this food. Amen. Angus sliced off a corner of the sizzling steak and skewered it with his fork. Ah. <laughs> but before he could take a bite, oh, for goodness sake. 
With a regretful glance at his stake, Angus headed over to his front door and opened it. His new chipper neighbor Marge stood there, holding an enormous Siamese cat. <sighs> Hello, Marge. I am so sorry to barge in, but I just found out about a super last minute work trip and I don't have anyone to watch Boris while I'm gone. Angus just stared at the cat and the cat stared back smugly as if he knew Angus hated cats. Well, I, I gotta tell you, you know, I've never been around cats much. Oh, that's no problem. I've got everything you need right here. Angus looked past Marge to see several bags and boxes, plus an entire carpeted climbing tree. So, could you do it? Angus glanced sadly at his quickly cooling steak, but he could see Marge was a little desperate. Well, okay. It took Marge nearly 10 minutes to explain every little detail of Boris the Cat's care. Finally, Angus was alone again with his steak. And Boris. Yeah, better keep those fuzzy paws away from my dinner, you hear me? But before Angus could take a bite! Ah, oh, what on earth? Angus jumped up and hurried over to the side window. He could see exactly what had happened. Ah, oh, that boy. Zachary Kircher was a kid who lived next door. He loved sports, but didn't have good aim. He'd already dented Angus's car with a baseball and destroyed a patch of petunias playing soccer. And this time, it was a rogue football that had hit the window. Huh. At least it didn't break the glass. Angus saw Zachary scrambling to recover the football and make his escape, but as he tried to hop the fence, he stumbled. <laughs> Serves him right. When Zachary got up, Angus could clearly see that he'd badly gashed his knee. Angus sighed, thought mournfully about his steak, and opened the window. Zachary! Oh, sorry, Mr. McCrane, I I'm leaving. No, 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 just hold on a minute. We gotta clean up that knee. So Angus grabbed his handy dandy first aid kit and headed outside. It took another 10 minutes to clean out all the dirt from Zachary's scrape and get it all bandaged up. And finally, Angus sat down to dinner again for the third time. His steak was barely warm. Uh, I am so hungry I could eat the entire cow. But before he could take a bite. Oh, that don't sound good. Angus ran to the front window. It appeared that the neighborhood ice cream truck had swerved to avoid Zachary, who had ran into the road to chase his football. Big no-no. And now that truck was listing sideways on a flat tire. Mm. You have got to be kidding me. <sighs> Angus opened the front door and headed down the sidewalk. The poor teenage driver was checking out the damage. It's my first day on the job. I wrecked the truck. They'll fire me. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. It's just a flat, son. You wait right here. <sighs> With a deep sigh, Angus headed back to his garage, grabbed his handy-dandy toolkit, and showed the young driver how to remove the flat tire and replace it with a spare. Thanks. I'd totally give you an ice cream sandwich, but they might fire me for giving stuff away. Angus wiped the grease off his hands as he watched the ice cream truck ramble down the street. Speaking of ice, his dinner must be stone cold by now. Excuse me? Angus jumped a mile to see Marge standing behind him. She was wearing oven mitts and holding a hot apple pie. Steam seeped from the cracks. I can't eat this since I've got to leave. I thought you might like it. Well, glory be. Angus inhaled the heavenly smell. Hmm. <sighs> First I interrupt your dinner, then you help that kid next door, and now changing a flat, you sure put others first. Ah, I don't generally feel like doing it, but uh, thank you. Angus happily accepted the apple pie. This time he would be putting dessert first while his dinner reheated in the oven. Now, it would have been a lot easier for Angus to just eat dinner and ignore the people around him who needed help. But little by little, God was helping him serve others, just like Jesus did. Wow, what a great story. You know, after listening to our Bible story this morning, I kind of feel like I owe Abby an apology. I was not very humble at all. I definitely learned a lesson from Angus today. While all he wanted to do was eat his meal, he knew that putting others first was what God wanted him to do. 
It's important to realize that Jesus put us first and we should be more like Jesus. Actually, how our bottom line says for today is put others first because Jesus put you first. That is such an important lesson to learn. We can do so much more for God's kingdom if we learn to put others first. What keeps you from putting others first in your own life? It's easy for us to focus on our own victories, but for Jesus calls us to be humble, to respect others and to treat others the way we want to be treated. For example, how I treated Abby earlier was completely unfair. I was very excited to win, but made Abby feel even worse by bragging about it and putting her down. We all struggle with being humble sometimes. But if we give those moments to God, He can do amazing things through you. We should all want to be more like Amos. While I go apologize to Abby, why don't you take a moment and respond during this next song? Maybe that is through worshiping and dancing along, or maybe that's spending time in prayer, asking God to come help you learn to be humble. Whatever that looks like for you, enjoy it. Praise God and be joyful in all of it. Afterwards, we will come back and spend some time with you in small groups. Senses fit this eyes that seek to find their hope in you. I made in your image. I made in your image. This heart that beats, this mouth that speaks more and more like you. I made in your image. I made in your image. Cause you are the potter and I am the clay. You're molding me, shaping me every day. Shaping me every day I'm trusting in the Lord on the day to day Picking up strength all along the way And you know what you're doing in me I'm trusting in the Lord on the day to day Picking up strength all along the way And you know what you're doing in me In your image I am His feet, these eyes that seek to find their hope in you. I made in your image. I made in your image. This heart that beats, this mouth that speaks more and more like you. I made in your image. I made in your image. Cause you are the potter and I am the clay. You're molding me, shaping me every day. When I am the clay You're molding me, shaping me every day I'm trusting in the Lord on the day to day Picking up strength all along the way And you know what you're doing in me I'm trusting in the Lord on the day to day Picking up strength all along the way You made me wonderful You made me special You made me precious You made me wonderful In your image I am Strength all along the way, and you know what you're doing in me. In your image, I made. 
Hey small groupies, welcome back to small group. I'm so glad you're here to hang out with us in small group today. Absolutely, I know I've missed you all like crazy and I'm so excited to be here with you today. Today for our small group, you will need yourself and one other person. We'll give you a minute to go grab that person now. This month, we're talking about humility, which is the upside down idea of putting others before yourself. If you're a follower of Jesus, God wants you to show his love through you, and God is shaping and molding us to be more like Jesus. So today, we thought it would be fun to play Bent, Bent into, into shape. shape. Here's how it works. We'll show you the shape on the screen, and you guys will make that shape at home. We'll give you five seconds to get into the shape, and then we'll give you a sentence to finish with ways that we can show humility by. Putting others first. Crouch, stretch, curl, and move your body to get into the right shape. Should we show them an example, Abby? Yeah, let's show them how it's done. Our first shape is gonna be making the letter A. Abby, why don't you go first and start our letter A? Thanks, Cody, that's so kind. I already did it. <laughs> Doesn't our A look great? Did you catch how Cody showed humility and put me first? That's right. I'm the humblest, humble, humble person there is. <laughs> Are you guys ready at home to play bent into shape? Let's go. Our first shape is the number one. Your five second timer starts now. Everybody get it? Finish this sentence. I can let others go first when... Oh, I know. Like when I let you go first with the letter A. You're so right. Way to show humility. I know, I'm awesome. I'm ready for the next one. Our next shape is a slice of pizza. Your timer starts now. Everyone got it? Finish this sentence. When there's only one slice of pizza left, and you are not the only one who wants it. What can you do? Yum, pizza. Wow, I love pizza. But I could show humility by putting others first and letting them have the last slice of pizza that me, myself, and I really want. I love pizza too. That would be so hard to do, but I know that it would be the right thing to do. Maybe the next shape will be a nice glass of pop that I can drink with my pizza. Man, I could really go for a nice bubbly glass of pop right now. Abby? Sorry. Can, can we move on? Oh uh, yeah, sorry, here we go. Next shape, and your, your timer, timer starts, starts now. now. Wow, a baseball. Sports are such a great way to show humility and how to put other people in front of yourself. Raise your hand at home if you play sports. How would you put your teammates first? Well, speaking of baseball, one time we were at camp, we were playing wiffle ball, and all of my friends were hitting home runs, and I didn't hit a single one. So instead of getting upset that I didn't hit a home run, I cheered them on, because I knew when my time come and I finally hit a home run, they would be happy and cheer me on too. Abby, we've got one last shape for our friends at home. Are you ready? I'm ready, here it comes. Oh, the shape of a heart. Let's finish this sentence. How does putting others first demonstrate God's love to them? What do you guys think? 
Well, I know that when you let me go first earlier to make the letter A, that made me feel really good. Most of the time, we're looking out for ourselves, doing what we want to do, making sure that we're okay. But treating others with kindness and respect shows others God's love. You're spot on, Abby. Most of the time, we are looking out for ourselves. But Jesus came and changed all of that. He flipped the way of thinking completely upside down. That's why I try to remember our bottom line, and that's to put others first because Jesus put us first. Whether you're at home, in your neighborhood, or at the grocery store, you can show humility and put someone else first this week. That's great, Cody. I thought we could practice our memory verse too, but because we've been making shapes, I thought we could add shapes to help us practice. Would you like to try? Yeah, let's go. All right, don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble and value others more than yourself. Philippians 2, 3. We are so happy that you guys joined us today, but we're not done yet. We want you to take the next 10 to 15 minutes to reflect on today's lesson and look at these family discussion topics. One, how did Angus feel about putting his plans on hold for others? Topic number two, everyone write down one thing you can do every day this week to put others before yourself. Bye, Bye guys. guys, see you, see you next week. week.